just to begin, this video um, will not be monetized. And the only real reason that I'm making it is because I can't stop thinking about it. And it's probably going to be a part of the healing process for me. It may be a part of the healing process for many of you. Um, on a day where everyone has been sharing experiences and stories and what the life of Michael Stockley has meant to them, how it's influenced them, how it's provided some change in their life, I thought I would throw my name on the pile, so to speak, because unmistakably, without embellishment, without the small pushes that Michael Stockley gave to me, I don't have many of the things that I do in life currently. The start that I had, the encouragement to move into the industry that I did, and any of the relative success that I've had even in the midst of what has been a very tumultuous 18 months would not have happened without the contributions of Michael Stockley. In probably about 2018, I was uh, I was going into my third year of film school, and that was also in the midst of probably one of the hardest depressive periods of my life. Um, that year, I had met some friends who got me into playing Rainbow Six, because that's where I started around Operation Chimera at the beginning of 2018, um, after the 2018 Invitational, so unfortunately that was before my time. Um, and later that summer, that's where I started, uh, getting invested and interested in pro league. And the first time that I tuned into a match on the rainbow six channel back in the day, the stream wasn't showing gameplay. It was cut to the desk, the Poland desk in Katowice. And it was Emzo on the right looking as, you know, chipper and daddish as, as he ever did. Right. Uh, just always smiling and energetic and right next to him was Kickstar. He was probably the face that I think I, I recognized the most. Um, the combination of uh, seemingly eccentric personality, uh, his appearance, I really liked his hair, um, his voice made him somebody who stood out from the rest, and it was kind of in uh, stark contrast to many of the other people who were on talent broadcast at the time. Like he was very different from uh from Intero, who was different from Milo, she was different from Emzo. And he 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 stood out in his own way. And that's where I think a lot of people also probably grew very attached to him was just j j just how different he was. His own method of standing out in a crowd. Um I watched the Paris Major, uh way more pro league and then by the time the Rio finals in season 8 of 2018 came around I could look at that desk the talent desk the casting desk and I knew in my heart that I wanted to work with these people in that environment like I was very much wanting to jump into broadcast make a transition from what I was doing in film school to something in Rainbow Six and I kind of knew that that's like that, that that's where I wanted to be um, and he was a big influence on that early on, which I think he was for a lot of people. In 2019, that's where I started making this YouTube channel and started actually like making some meaningful connections, you know, as, as this began to blow up without knowing anything else about me other than that he had seen maybe like, I don't know, I posted probably like four or five videos by the time he did this. He retweeted, uh, me and like one of the videos or like my channel or something, uh, we hadn't, I think, spoken at that point. And he was one of the first super prominent people to shout me out and say that he was enjoying the work that I was doing. And it, it, it freaking floored me. Like it was 
was very unexpected coming from somebody of his position and his stature. Um, there were a couple of people who were doing that around that time, but when it came from him, it was like, I didn't have any reason to believe that the stuff that I was creating was going to resonate with someone like Kix. I didn't know if it would be something that he enjoyed because it was, you know, <laughs> it was a video talking about Goga leaving G2. It was Markov team reciprocity in favor of vertical. It was, it was mostly like roster transfer information, but he said it was something that he like enjoyed on a personal level. And I, 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 I didn't really understand how to make that make sense in my head. Um, but I didn't take it for granted. And I, uh, said thank you and moved on. Uh, not two months later, a friend of mine helped me get to the 2026 Invitational. Um, if you watch that land, you might remember there was a, a whole group of idiots making a whole bunch of noise uh, on the sidelines and jumping up and down and chanting on a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, that was that was that was my friends and I. Um, it, it was it was crazy, but we got a lot of camera time because you know we were making so much noise. And uh, over time, he must have noticed because he DMs me at the Invitational mid-cast, I don't remember what game it was, um, it may have been Grand Finals, he DMs me a picture of me that he took from his position in the casting nest, and he just sends it to me and he goes, that you? It's like, it's it's completely unexpected, and it, it was, it, I, I went back and I, I found that message uh, earlier today, and I may or may not have just sat there staring at it. Um... But after the grand finals were over, this is something I'm never going to forget. Everyone is like all walking around because everyone's like kind of like emptied the stands. The event's already over. Um, and I walk around up to the casting nest, just kind of around it. Uh, and he sees me and he motions for me to come down. And I didn't, didn't really know what that was about. But he invites me down. Um, he, I go over. He he greets me. He um, asks me kind of like about my ambitions. I talk about like a want to get into commentary. We kind of spend like a collective minute like looking out over this confetti strewn arena with a whole bunch of people down on the stage helping to celebrate SSG's win, and we just kind of we have like a moment of like five minutes of nothing but back and forth honest guy to guy talk he's imparting some initial advice about getting into commentary because at this point i hadn't even done cl he's talking he's just imparting advice he's providing encouragement he's being very open and very honest and you can tell right away from talking with him the first time i'd ever seen him in the flesh that he just does not have an ego he he's he's not somebody who you know is that really considers himself above anybody else and it, it very much feels like he could have had this kind of conversation with anybody but what he did was he saw me in a crowd and then decided to take a second out of his day to pull me aside somebody who was a relative nobody who at that point only had youtube subs and a couple of twitter followers to his name who had never done commentary before he pulled me aside At the time, I didn't really recognize how significant that was because in hindsight, it was probably the thing that gave me enough encouragement to keep on pushing until I'm at the point where I'm at now. He didn't see himself as somebody who was above others. He was willing to give people the time of day he was earnest he was honest he was down to earth and he would not have looked at a situation like that as being all that impactful he probably wouldn't have looked at that conversation and like really given it a second thought but that will stick with me forever because it carries a kind of boundary breaking significance, a moment where you don't feel as though you have to idolize somebody and you're able to connect with somebody on a more, whether like a promotional, a promotional, a professional or emotional level that helps to tear away the idea that you can't 
or, or, or that th- th- there's something in the way of you being able to connect more with this person. Kix was very open about the possibility of 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 just connecting. It, it wasn't even that, like we were going to work together because we wouldn't do that for several months. We wouldn't do it until the end of the year. But he just provided an opportunity to be open with somebody who he thought had value. And over time, he would be somebody who I, I've heard stories be told about him always finding a way to like stand up for the little guy. That's what he did with Parker back when he was initially looking for a different casting duo back in the day. That's what he did when he uh, evidently vouched for different people behind the scenes from a talent point of view. Um, when I was doing stu- uh, stuff in CL, I remember I asked him for advice. Um, as I began to work my way through additional commentary, um, opportunities came up to be able to like jump in like FPL cast with him, I think, uh, which we did for a couple of nights, which was also like boundary breaking because it wasn't a case where he felt like he was exclusive or that he was he was like how do I put it he wasn't holding himself away from the community or from people that he enjoyed the company of and I think at that point it was probably still a little bit mind-blowing to me that that was something he was willing to do for me because again you know even as I found success in CL it still wasn't a case where I felt like I'd made it you know Fast forward to October 2020, and that's where uh, I get asked to step in for a couple of shows on the North American League desk, and it was like November major qualifier territory, Um, and he, obviously I was a new guy, but he didn't treat me like a new guy. He didn't look at anything that I did um, and treat me as though I, I didn't belong. He was very welcoming he was always um willing to give advice if i asked for it but at that point i didn't really ask for too much advice because i was trying to like absorb everything in an environment that i simply wasn't used to and i was just trying to like sit back and like pay as much attention as i possibly could and i found myself going back and watching more of kix's work and i uh, and paying like much closer attention to what he said because he's the greatest color commentator slash analyst this game is ever going to see and listening to his wisdom and listening to his advice and taking that and absorbing it and finding a way to mold it into what I was doing as an analyst. And then as I kept getting asked back for more events, it was just something where I, I kept on gravitating more towards the things that he was saying and just listening to, to the wisdom that he imparted and just using it as a role model. When the NAL came around for this year, um, it was kind of obvious that, you know, with everything being stuck in a remote setting and no one really having the ability to do anything that wasn't, you know, casting online as opposed to being in person, it was pretty clear that... (sighs) Excuse me. It was kind of clear that everybody behind the scenes was beginning to struggle with the idea of being within this box and not being able to see the people that you were working with in person and you know dealing with the obvious struggles that come from being in an online setting more often than an offline setting um Kix is somebody who spent three years in an environment in Poland where he wasn't his happiest a country that he didn't truly want to be in, but he was making a sacrifice for a game and a community that he loved. And when the pandemic came around, it was like he was, he was home and he was able to be around familiar people. But then as he kind of talked about it, it was more and more clear that he was getting frustrated with the idea of still not being in a position where he felt like he was winning, I guess like, being frustrated by not being able to do your job to the fullest potential that you know you can. Like when you go to land and it feels super freeing because everything kind of works out and you're 
you see everybody in person and you don't feel like you have anything like constraining you and then you either you have to like go back home and it just it isn't like quite the same experience right and that was like palpable and i felt that um and i i heard that frustration and i understood it because you know i i'm not at a point where i can really feel jaded about this industry myself but you you, you still understand when somebody feels frustrated or feels like they can't do their job as well as they want to because you know i've i felt the same way after having done this for a year like i i'm I, i'm slowly beginning to understand that mentality um stage three finally rolls around and this is probably when uh no sorry uh stage two sorry stage two rolls around this is after si uh had gotten rescheduled and you know they weren't able to go but we knew we had Mexico on the horizon and everybody was kind of chomping at the bit trying to you know make sure that we had a really good a game going and we knew that we were finally going to have a LAN it was going to be my first so I was super excited about it and what ends up happening is Parker has to get sidelined for um, only one play day, but he had to get sidelined for surgery. And because I had done some other casting work for Face It and obviously had done CL only a little bit previously, I got asked um, if I could step in for Parker for one play day and to cast alongside Kicks. It was the first time I would have casted a tier one production a tier one league i had casted like xset and dark zero before i like i I'd done some pro am work but this was the first time i'd done tier one as a caster not as an analyst and it was alongside kicks the <laughs> the first game will go down as prob probably one of the most ridiculous games of the year probably the most ridiculous game of the year at least in na with some of the greatest sound bits ever. We called it Kicks getting so angry he was starting his Joker arc because of what he was watching in that match. And I I was I I was there for it. Um <laughs> like everyone's gonna, you know, remember it for being such a ridiculous game, but at the same time, everyone's now also going to remember it for being one of the greatest spectacles kind of known to man um i was nervous i didn't really know how it was going to work out um you know it was the stakes for that game weren't super big going into it but i still wanted to make a good first impression and then that happened and we're just like god what do we do um but then we got a, a, another game after that which was uh oxg ssg which went better it was a better matchup overall um felt like it was more of an actual like casting test so to speak and felt like it was more complete and then after it was done kicks and i talked for a little bit afterwards just about like some very basic things like uh super super basic points of casting that i i felt like i was rusty on um we just sat there for a couple minutes and talked about some things that worked some things that didn't work i thanked him for you know be being willing to work with me on this and he said it was no problem and he said that he thought i did a great job mexico rolls around and it's the first time that i get to see a whole bunch of these guys since the invitational 2020 first time in a land environment you know at that point i was i was nervous about the whole first time land experience thing but also a little nervous about working with monty because it wasn't the host that i was used to and monty's also a legend so it was kind of double pressure and getting to see everybody in person was it, it, like extremely therapeutic and was something i think everyone there needed but being able to w see some of these guys in their element getting to see blue and stokes have their moment again next to one another where it's obvious that their chemistry clicks the best when they're together getting to see skies have a good outing 
in a desk analyst position, getting to see Monty flourish as a host where he had some, I think he said afterward he had some some doubts coming into the event, but he, it ended up being a really good test for him, getting to see how Jesse and I worked to, uh, together, but getting to watch Parker and Kix after so long of being confined and understanding how difficult isolation and not working together in person was for the two of them getting to see that shackle get removed and it was amazing and for a lot of it you know when we when we left the green room because we came back in to uh, into the the studio when games were on match point, and we wouldn't be able to watch the game from our desk. We had to go around to the casting desk, and we we would stand behind whoever was casting just to make sure that we understood what happened in like the last round. I just I just remember standing behind both of them and just being in awe of that energy, in awe of that chemistry, and feeling like I was watching the best to ever do it, knock it out of the park as if they hadn't skipped a beat. And their energy was palpable. Like, it was insane. It didn't It didn't just make itself manifest at the event. Like, Kix is... <laughs> uh, it, it, it felt like... It, 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 he's the kind of person who can make it feel as though you've been friends for a really goddamn long time and even though we'd only seen each other in person at once up until that point uh you know we were still hugging like old bros we were we were you know talking for ages i gave him a piggyback ride around the studio <laughs> i gave him a he just it, 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 it was, uh, it was he, sorry Oh my god, I can't believe how many times I just stuttered. He was standing on the stage where the analyst desk was, and I was standing on the floor, and he's like, I'm taller than you, and I'm like, you better enjoy it, because this won't last for very long. And he's like, I bet you give me a piggyback ride. I bet you give good piggyback rides. And I'm like, I bet I could do that. And he just hops on. So I, I, just, I just get him, and just sprint around the studio for a little bit. I wish to God video existed to that. Um... There's a picture of it up on Twitter of what it of what it looked like. Um, he was very animated. He was very earnest, and he was he was giving me advice. He, he was he, he came up at one point during Mexico and said, "I don't know if this fits you. Let's 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 fix some things here." He asked me like we talked about watches before the event started and I wasn't able to get one before the event did and he asked me what watch I had and I said the same Casio that I've been rocking for the past 10 years or whatever it was and and he didn't like scoff at it because he's you know he's a watch aficionado he went excellent choice. He never made you feel bad. He was looking for ways to help and ways to uplift and ways to encourage. That's the story of who he was. He didn't look to tear down. He was looking to encourage. He was looking for reasons to make you feel good. He was looking for positivity. And in a lot of cases, he found it. And he didn't even have to make an effort to be a good friend to be a good friend. He just was. From the time that we spoke in Montreal to the times that we talked about me being an analyst and the encouragement and the advice that he imparted to getting the chance to work with him as a caster to talking back and forth about work, about, about watches, about cars, about whatever it might have been. The single greatest thing that I can say about Michael Stockley is that
he was an influence, he was a rock, and he was a friend. He didn't give a damn about the fame or the like he didn't care about the fame he didn't care about the notoriety he didn't care about the influence he had in the community he didn't let the money that he made from his job speak for him what he did was always an extension of who he was and he didn't allow his situation to change who he was I can think of a lot of people who if they suddenly got a lot of money or a lot of compliments or a lot of influence would allow something like that to go to their heads and they might not be able to use it well he is not one of those people at all He never carried himself as though he was above anybody else. I bet you there were some people who probably had to get used to his personality, but that wasn't ever a problem because it was it was it was very endearing and it was one of the things that drew me to him in the first place before I knew him as a person. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard to go back to NAL play days. And not see him there. It's going to be really hard. But it's I'm I'm so I'm so lucky. I'm so fortunate. I'm very very happy with with getting the opportunities to do what I did with him because it is impossible to understate the kind of impact that he had on me and I don't see a world where 90% of what I've been able to do happens if he isn't the same rock, the same influence, and the same friend that he was. And I'm not the only one who owes him a lot. There are a lot of people who owe him the world. But he's just he's just the kind of person who wouldn't see it that way. Who just wouldn't see it as a big deal. Because to him, he was just doing what it took for the love of the game, for the love of the job, for the love of the community, and for the love of his friends. It doesn't feel real right now, but that's okay. That's all right. We haven't had something like this happen to the Siege community before, and that's alright. 
if you don't know how to respond, if you don't understand how to think, if you don't know what you're supposed to be feeling in this moment, that is completely okay. I, I don't. <laughs> but we're going to figure it out. We're going we're gonna to go back into broadcast. We're going to find a way to forge on because the best thing that we can do to honor the memory of Michael Kickstar Stockley is to just keep on doing the things that he was doing. To just show up put our best foot forward and make sure that everything that we do is to the best of our ability because goddamn he put forth that every single time he showed up on broadcast he still every day did not slack off and he always gave everything of himself to make sure that multiple people here have the friends and the homes that they do Farewell, Michael. And thank you for everything. <laughs>